welcome for church today. This is PAG Worship Center downtown. My name is Miriam, and I'm going to be taking you through the different segments of services that we have today. First, we're starting off with the main celebration service for everyone. Thereafter, we're going to have a children's service for our children out there. And we're going to crown it all with a powerful youth and teenage service. Please be a part of all these services because we have a lot in store for you. Today is a beautiful day that the Lord has made for us to come together and celebrate him. And right about now, I'm going to ask you wherever you are, whether you're in your house, with your family, in your bedroom, in your compound, I'm going to ask you to rise up and stand on your feet as we join the worship team in celebrating our King. Everyone, I have come to give back to you. 
Father, before you, Jesus. We choose to trust in you, not in our riches, our houses, the people, but to put our trust in you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, wherever you are, just honor the name. in the name of 
the Lord. Trust in the name of Jesus. He is our better friends and help in times of need. He is our strong tower. He is our refuge. Go ahead and speak to the Lord. Take your hands, place your hands in that part of your body that you need deliverance from the Lord because He is so great. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to give you all the glory, praise, and honor for who you are. Right now, look at your child, your servant, your son, and your daughter who is out there going through many afflictions. But your word says that you shall deliver the righteous from all sorts of the afflictions that they go through. I pray that may you put your hands of deliverance upon them. 
raise your healing hands towards them because you are great your name is above all names your name is greater than any other name yes we bless your name jehovah jireh yes we worship you lord we give you all the praise we give you all the glory because you are good you are good lord we worship your name we thank you in jesus name we pray amen amen can everybody give a big hand clap to the lord thank you so much our worship team for the amazing worship that we have just had right now oh thank you thank you praise the lord you know it's a very nice thing to be in the house of the lord and be it you're listening on radio or you're watching you are still in the house of the lord and in church here we have many things that are happening around church that you can get involved in in this time of the pandemic uh, we love young people so much that is why we want to make sure that at least once in a week these young people get to meet and share the gospel together we have what we call special cells which happen every tuesday from 3 to 5 p.m and then as a family you need to meet you need to check on how your neighbors are doing you need to interact with them we have what we call family cells family cells happen every tuesday from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. That is where you can enjoy together. And then the last program we have been running right now is what we call a turning point class. This happens every Friday from, 1, 11, uh, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So anytime that you're free, feel free and go for this. And we are serving as a church and we are coming live on radio and on social media because of your support. Our support numbers are still open. You can go to your MTN and dial star 165, star 3 ash, and then you can send us your contribution or your type on our MTN. Our Momo code is 501717. I repeat, 501717. And now, for more of the church news, let us tune our ears and then we listen. Thank you so much. The only way to drive out darkness is to turn on the light. The only way for people to be set free from fear, immorality, and hopelessness is for people to come to know Jesus. Jesus told us that He is the light of the world, and as we follow Him and do what He does, we too become the light of the world. As we shine the light of Jesus to the world, the darkness fades. Jesus said he will build his church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. That's a powerful church. When a whole church, not just those on stage, know and come to Jesus, we will see Jesus, the light of little city. With effect from 29th August 2021, PAG Worship Center downtown name will be changed to PAG Citram, which stands for Christ Transforming Ministries. Let's all welcome the big name. Now it's a special time that I want to welcome Pastor Peter to come and speak to us. Let's give a hand of applause as we welcome him. You're welcome, Pastor. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much, media team, for such a great work. Church, my name is Pastor Peter Okodo, and thank you for attending this weekend service. We love you so much, and we want to pray that the Lord takes care of you wherever you are. Now, this weekend service, we want to welcome you in a very, very special way, and today, we have our bishop together with us. But first of all, I want to thank you so and so very much for your wonderful and your wonderful contribution. Thank you for being part of what God is doing in our city. And I want to tell you one thing, that your generosity has not only kept us moving, but it has kept us growing. So we want to thank you for your giving, for your tithe, and for your offertory. Please keep giving. Now today, in a very special way, I want to welcome our own Bishop. Bishop Silvanus is here with us and is going to give us the word of God. Thank you and Bishop, you are most welcome to take us through the word. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Today is a very special day for us to come before him once again. And I feel so much privileged to speak to you from the word of God as we have been going on for the last four weeks today I'll be speaking about imitating the work of Christ 
Join me if you can in the book of 1 John chapter 2 verse 6. 1 John chapter 2 verse 6 says this. He that says he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. He that says he abideth in him ought he also to walk just as he walked. This is the text that the Lord has given me for you today. Imitating the work of Christ. The scripture says, ladies and gentlemen, that when one is in Christ, he or she becomes a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. In the state of being in Christ, we experience a displacement. We experience a displacement where the gap or rather the vacuum left is filled by the character of Jesus Christ. And in the text we have just read, John tells us clearly that when one claims to be in Christ Jesus, then such a person should prove that he or she is indeed in Christ Jesus. It is not just about the lip service, but practically such a one must give the proof that he or she is indeed in Christ Jesus. In other words, to walk like Christ has the idea that the claimer takes Christ as the role model and allow his character to shape his life. So when one claims to be in Christ Jesus, then such a person must take Jesus Christ as his role model. And so to say we are in Christ Jesus, and yet we fail to take Jesus as our role model, then definitely that makes us fail to mean exactly what we confess with our mouths. So when the character of Christ has shaped your life, then it will overshadow you and people will not see you, but instead they will see Jesus Christ in you. Today, interestingly, ladies and gentlemen, all we need as believers who are in Christ Jesus is to be like him. There is nothing more important to us as believers than to be like Jesus. Because if we belong to Jesus, then definitely as those that believe in him, we should be able to copy everything that Jesus Christ did. And to be like Jesus Christ, the following works will help shape you into the image of Jesus Christ. The following works will help shape you into the image of Christ. One of the works that will help to shape you in the mere image of Christ is what I call the walk of humility. What is humility by definition? Humility is a state of mind or an attitude which makes one treat others with respect and also live peaceably with them. A humble person will treat other people with respect and will hope to live in peace with everybody who is around him or her. Someone says, that the way up is the way down. And the way down is the way up. In other words, he is saying that when someone exalts himself, then such a person will instead be brought down. But when such a person goes down, then that person will be exalted by God. What is Jesus clearly telling us here? In the book of Matthew chapter 20, Verse 25 to 28, Jesus makes a very interesting statement here to the disciples. Matthew chapter 20, verse 25 to 28 says this. Verse 25 to 28 says that, But Jesus called, unto, called them unto him and said, you know that the, the, the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. And they that are great exercise authority upon them. 
but it, it shall not be so among you. Let him be, excuse me a little bit, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be minister, be your minister. And whosoever will be um, meek among you, let him be the servant. Even as the son of man came, not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So Jesus talks about something which is a contrast between the way the Gentile leaders live and the way the church or the believers should behave. He talks of the Gentile leaders as those people who are always up. They tend to, you know, overload the rest of the people by treating themselves to be men and women who are highly exalted. And by doing that, they make the rest of the people who are under them suffer most. And here Jesus draws a contrast where he says, among you as believers, things are not going to be like that. There must be a difference because if someone amongst you wants to be great, then that person must serve others. If you want to be great, you must serve others. Without doing that, you are going to do something which is contrary to the will of the Father which is in heaven. Now according to the Apostle Paul, we see Paul recommending to the believers the work of humility. Where he says to the Philippian church, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 9. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 9, Paul recommends to the believers the work of humility. Where he says in verse 5, like this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But make himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as man, he humbled himself and came, uh, uh, and came obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Now, here Paul calls for the Philippian Christians to put on the mind of Jesus Christ. And he says, the mind which was in Jesus Christ is the same mind which should be copied or emulated by the believers. And he says Jesus was equal to God. But because Jesus wanted to fulfill the mission of restoring man back to God, he chose the way of obedience and he became like a man. He came down and lived in the likeness of man so that he may be able to draw people back to God. Now in doing this, Jesus earned for himself the name which is greater than all other names. The name above all names. But first he began by taking the form of man. In his, you know, in his state of humility. And after he had done that, then God, the Father, was able to exalt him um, and give him, and gave him the name which is above all names. And so, ladies and gentlemen, do we need to be like Christ? Do we need to walk like Christ? Then we should copy the humility that Jesus exhibited to us while it was down here. And when we do that, then definitely our work will completely make us be like him. The second work that will help shape us into the image of Christ is the work of obedience. Obedience by definition is an act of submission to authority. An act of submission to authority. You know, the challenge we have today is this. There is what we call human rights. There is also what we call gender equality. And there is what we call children's rights. All these rights affect obedience in such a tremendous way. Obedience, which should characterize the life of the believers or the character of the believers, is even being undermined by everybody. And so, not many people take obedience as something which should be taken seriously. And so, the church as such must be able to live a life of obedience 
if we are to be like Jesus Christ, when Jesus was faced with the challenge of restoring man back to God, he made a prayer. A prayer which he, he, he indeed was actually in between the two um, dimensions. Here Jesus was able to say to, to God in his prayer that, Father, if it were possible, take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, let not my, not, not my will, but let your will be done. This is in Matthew 26, verse 39. So he was in total agony. Things were not good for Jesus Christ. When Jesus thought of moving forward, he also at the same time thought of giving up. And that's why he says, if it were possible, the father could have taken away the cup from him. But the obedience informed Jesus, and quickly Jesus was able to submit to the will of God, where he was able to say, Father, not my will, but let your will be done. The church must copy the life of obedience if the church is to fulfill the will of Jesus Christ. Now, below we have some of the relationships that cannot prosper without the act of obedience. It is the relationship that cannot succeed, cannot be healthy if obedience is absence. Number one, there is what I call the parent-child relationship. If there is no good relationship between the parents and the children due to the obedience, then definitely that relationship is not going to work. The relationship will have a very big problem. Paul in, in um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3, urges children to be obedient to the parents. And when he asks them to be obedient, he says, you obedient to the parents is a command with a promise. And he continues to say that if any of you wants to have long life, then definitely you are supposed to honor your father and your mother. He did not leave it that way, but also he turns and talks to the parents, where he urges parents not to provoke children into anger. And so it is a two-way system where children are to be obedient to their parents, and then parents also should be able to treat children in a manner that will not provoke them into anger. Another relationship that can only be healthy uh, because of obedience is what I call the husband-wife relationship. Relationship between the man and the wife. Where women are called upon to submit to their husbands. And men or husbands are called upon to love their wives. And so as women submit to their husbands, then husbands should love their wives. If the two parties are doing exactly what is commanded here, then definitely we will see that this relationship will prosper. Number three, that is what I call the master-servant relationship, where servants are supposed to give service. And the service they give to their masters should be the service of obedience, where they will not be able to do lip service or eye service where they expect their masters to see things that they do in order to please them. But the service they give to their masters must be the services that are within the command of Jesus Christ. In other words, they should give service as if they're giving service to Jesus Christ and not to their masters. And to the masters, they are also supposed to be able to treat the servants in the manner that will make them good. Another relationship that can only prosper because of obedience is the Christ church relationship. The relationship between Christ and the church. Jesus says, I am a good shepherd. My sheep hears me and they follow me. Now, the hearing here is not just about acknowledgement. The hearing here is about obedient response to the will of Jesus, who is the shepherd and the church is the flock. And so, they should be able to respond to Jesus as he calls them to draw to him. 
and then last but not least there is what i call the civil authority the civil and authority relationship the relationship with the between the civil and the main in authority in Romans chapter 1 verse 1 to 5 it calls for submission to the authority it calls for everybody to listen to the authority because all authorities have been established by god and so being disobedient to any authority means going against god's own establishment so everybody is called upon to be subject to the authority and paul continues to say that these authorities have been given power by god even to punish those people who stray those people who act against the will of the authority are supposed to meet the punishment that comes from this authority because they operate on behalf of the god who has appointed them and so ladies and gentlemen do we want to live in an environment where we will be like jesus christ then we should live a life of obedience where obedience will help us to progress in whatever we do by listening to one another in our course of action we will be able to succeed in whatever we do whether it be in the family whether it be at our places of work whether it be in terms of our relationship and people in authority all we need is to be people that are obedient to those who are above us then the third work that the believers should emulate or copy from jesus christ is the work of love the work of love in acts chapter 10 verse 38 the bible says that jesus moved about in the region of galilee doing good doing good he healed people he provided for the needs of the people as somebody who was driven by the love um, which he had for the people to whom god had actually sent him the interesting thing about the work of love are that number one it is a work of sacrifice if you are to be somebody who walk in love then definitely you know that that walk is the work of sacrifice in other words to love is not something simple it is something which is very costly and sometimes love costs to you your own life in roman chapter 5 verse 8 to 9 we see god commanding his love to us and here paul says in roman chapter 5 verse 8 that roman 5 verse 8 paul says yes verse 8 paul says but god commanded his love towards us in that while we are yet sinners christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from the wrath to come now here love brings in two people love brings in god and love brings in jesus christ and the two are unified in the mission of restoring the lost man back to god that's why paul is saying god demonstrated this love in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us the love that god has demonstrated here is unconditional love god has not waited for us to be righteous he has not waited for us to be holy people in order for him to express his love to us but god simply came and got us the way we are that's why john 3 16 says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life god so loved the world so loved the world simply means god loved the world the way the world is the way the world was before anything else has been done he go he comes in gets the last man in his sinfulness and he runs towards such a person to him through the mission that jesus christ effected when he came down here so it is a work of sacrifice that led to the death of jesus it is not only the work of sacrifice but it's also a condition of our relationship of of, of our discipleship
Do we really want to be men and women who are followers of Jesus Christ? Then love is a must. Love is a must. Any relationship that does not embrace love is not a healthy relationship. What is Jesus saying here? In Matthew in John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35, he says, we should be able to love one another just as we love ourselves. And Jesus continues to say this, if we love one another as we love ourselves, through that, we will be able to prove to people that indeed we are the followers of Jesus Christ. And so, talking about being believers in Christ, talking about being followers of Jesus Christ verbally, does not make any sense until we'll be able to employ love and love which is practical that men are able to see that will make us be qualified as the followers of Jesus Christ. It is also a recommended work for all the believers. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Paul says this. Say, be ye therefore followers of God as their children. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savour. Be ye therefore followers of God. In other words, Paul is saying, be imitators of God. Follow what God has done by expressing his love. And the very love that we see God demonstrate demonstrating here is the kind of love we should copy and apply it among ourselves as those who are in Christ Jesus. So that when we do it, then definitely we will be living a lifestyle which will make us look exactly like Jesus Christ. Anything sort of that will be something different. Anything sort of that will be leading us into a situation where we become liars. Because if we act contrarily to what God has demonstrated to us in terms of love, where he loves, and then instead we choose the way of hate, or the way of war, or the way of conflict, then definitely that won't be good for us. So we should be able to do just as he has also done it last but not least that's what i call the walk of forgiveness the walk of forgiveness you remember when jesus was hung up on the cross people were insulting him people were mocking at him people were even pricking him all sort of pricks the barrage of insult and jesus the bible says made a prayer and the prayer which he made was for the people who were mocking him. And he lifted up his eyes to God and he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. This is an intercessory prayer. The person who was being tormented, the person who was being punished for no cause, has turned into an intercessor for the very people who are destroying him. This is the kind of thing we need to copy from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Where we do not do evil as men do evil to us. We choose the way of doing good as the rest of the people may choose to do bad to us. That's why Paul says, be not overcome of evil, but rather overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome of evil, overcome evil with good. Now. When people choose to do wrong to you, you should choose to do the right thing. When people choose war against you, you should choose the way of peace. When people choose hatred, you should choose love. This is how we will be able to express or rather demonstrate the lifestyle of Jesus Christ, which is expected of us as those who believed in Christ Jesus. And last but not least, you know, you will be able to feel a defense of rough management when you choose the way of forgiveness. What is Paul saying in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2 with regards to this? Paul says, 
And be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted, forgiving one another. Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. This is something very interesting. That as believers, we should be able to do. Here Paul says, be kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Now why is God talking about forgiving? God knows that in an environment where people are living together, a conflict can easily arise. And not only that, the world we are in is the world which is completely infested with sin. The devil is in charge. And every time he create a situation of conf conflict where he expects to see God's people being in con total confusion, in total division, in hate, and in all sorts of things that will make them fail to be like their father. And so he says, forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. In other words, take the forgiveness of God who was able to send Jesus Christ in order to forgive us sinners and not only forgive us sinners, sinners and leave us there but also to restore us back to him after he has forgiven us so ladies and gentlemen as i wind up i want to make an appeal to you by saying this is the time that the believers should prove to be true believers the time of making false confession is far gone the time of talking the truth has actually come where when we say we are believers in Christ Jesus, we should be able to reflect the life of Christness, uh, Christ likeness in us so that nobody will be able to get somewhat to speak against us when they see us live like our God, when they see us conduct ourselves like our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you. Wow, thank you Bishop for such a wonderful message that has come to us. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to thank you this great morning for you teaching us. You've given us your word and we have learned your ways, Jesus. All we want to do, we want to follow you. We want to follow your step everywhere, every single minute, Lord. And so we are praying that Father, just lead us, just guide us, just direct us. Teach us humility more and more and teach us to be good like you were. Teach us to walk like you were teach us to forgive one another and maybe you have attended this service and you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and this morning you're saying I want to walk like Jesus I want to be like Jesus just pray this um, just follow me in this prayer just say father here I come before you Jesus I've heard about you you are loving you're caring and you're forgiving and that is what I want to be now I accept you in my life. Come into my life and redeem me. Make me your very own and write my book, my name in the book of life. From today, I accept to follow you. And from today, I accept to be your son. If you prayed that prayer, you have become a born again. And I want just to guide you. Just get into any nearby Bible teaching church. But if you wish to follow us and to be part of our church and our service, please, you can just contact us on this on the following uh, numbers, which I'm giving you 0760-311-806. I repeat that, 760 triple one eight zero six or zero three nine four zero one zero double three five i repeat that zero three nine four zero one zero three three five thank you so very much for attending our service and want to make it a point that next week we'll be here same time to serve you may god bless you and bless you thank you enjoy your week wow wow that sermon was powerful we love you so much bishop and we would love to hear more of these messages and i hope you out there you are so much blessed by this and if you gave your life to Christ, this is a very special thing that you've decided to do. And we want to welcome you to the family 
of God. And you want to read more to us and we get to know more about you or you need any assistance, you need prayers, I want you to read us in these numbers that I'm going to read here. Uh, 0760-111-806. I repeat, 0760-111-806. And then you can also call the other MTN number on 03 9401033355 And now before I conclude I want you to tune again for more information on how you can give to the church For more giving options use MTN Momo dial star 165 star 3 ash enter the merchant code 501717 enter the amount to be paid Select the payment option and enter your mobile money pin to confirm payment. Or make a deposit to KCB Bank Lira Branch to account number 220-222-2251 under the account name PAG Worship Center Lira. And once again, not forgetting our special group of people. These are our children. This I love children so much. Let's give a big hand of applause and let all the kids in your compound get ready for this wonderful service that is coming. Let's welcome our children for the church. Kids, you're welcome.